I can't think of his name. It was Steve something. Because that, the, whatever you paid for the class, plus three more nights in the hotel and food and everything, that had to have added up a lot, right? Yeah, that's a sore spot. Okay, so not <laughs> worth it. All right. Hey, Samantha, that's all I want to know. Yeah, Samantha, if you could send me the link to this Benita. Absolutely. It, and this man, right. he, it's like so, like, easy to read. He's on oh, good. videos. He's great. Are you talking about, my, uh, I just came in midstream are you talking about the ppa like cpp ccp cpp oh okay yeah, yeah. is it um steve kozak i think it is thank but, you steve i knew it was steve something he is wonderful i just ordered his book i haven't read it yet yeah, and it's I've, very inexpensive maybe a hundred something and all his videos are open so i'll um i'll find it real quick and send it out i'll just post it to everybody hmm. I'm going to start sharing my screen here. 601. <coughs> Eastern time. So Dave Kelly, where are you? Because I don't think I've ever met you. Oh, I'm in Arizona. Oh, well, that would explain it. Yeah. No, but Lisa, is that really a big record player behind your head of course it is <laughs> unplugged no 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 it works it totally works we have a record player and we have oh if i could carry this around and i could show you how many albums we have that closet back there there's probably six feet of albums there are another like three feet out there and another three feet over there yeah oh that's like that's like 72 pounds of pure plastic isn't it uh-huh. <laughs> yeah, and those are all, I, I, back in um, probably the early 90s, I sold most of my vinyl because I was just so tired of the weight of it and trying to move and trying to do something with it. And, you know, which apparently is sacrilege. Uh, so all that is my husband's. I kept some of them, like some kind of special things, but um, most of that is my husband's, so. Someday we're going to move out of this house and I don't know what we're going to do with it all because, you know, anyway. Yeah, I've got about 3,000 albums and I've been playing with tubes and vinyl. Hell, just out of college. Still have it. Yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah it yeah. sounds better than a compact disc or MP3 or MP players. I know. That's what everyone says. But, you know, having so much you know, this size, it's so much more portable. Yeah, there's this thing called Spotify. Mm. That That's even more use. portable. Yeah. yeah. I love it. I love it. Okay. Yeah, we've got some albums too. Not nearly as many as those, but yeah, it's pretty cool. But we, we, we can top you there. We have another section that looks like albums, but they're actually laser discs. Oh, wow. I got those too. <laughs> I remember laser discs. We had yeah. a bunch of those. They look just a little bit worse than uh, VHS. Yeah. <laughs> Dave, are those hidden behind your Betamax tapes? <laughs> no. Hey, do you know the reason why VHS uh, took off and Betamax didn't? No. Yes. Uh, I remember the story, but tell us. Yeah, what is the story? Yeah, so Sony didn't allow porn on Betamax. <gasps> oh, so of it course. Died. Yeah. So look up here in the shelf above the window. See that up there? Yeah. Is that your porn collection? <laughs> no, no, no. That is all um, books on tape, now known as audiobooks. So yeah. there are actually cassette tapes. There are CDs. And what are we ever going to do with them? And there are a whole bunch more up there. Yeah. We're Don't inundated. them to the library. I wonder if yeah. the library would even take them at this point. They will. They will? Okay. Yep. Well, we'll see. <laughs> Yeah, well, music actually lost it when it stopped coming on round things. Yeah. Uh, anyway. Okay, you all ready to get started? Let's do yes. it. Okay. Um, I'm going to do a little bit on a face here because uh, some people asked about different ways that I do skin. Okay, I used to always do it a certain one way. Um, there's three different ways I'm going to show you today. And um, the... Uh, 
Uh, one of the ways in, include, involves a $200 filter, but that filter has saved me from having carpal tunnel um, uh, early, early on. I almost actually got carpal tunnel smoothing things out and for 200 bucks, pfft, done. Okay, so I'll show you a couple ways. Uh, one way that I only started doing maybe a year ago is with uh, frequency separation. So I'm going to uh, bring this up, and I don't know. Have all of you used frequency separation before? Yep. Yeah, yeah you have? I have, yes. I use yes. it on every portrait. Okay. Um, I tried it several times and found that... Um, I kind of understood it, but it took so long. So I, um, I changed it around to be more what I wanted. Okay. Um, so I've got an action, which I've shared, but I can share it again if anybody needs it. And of course, you start the action. It asks you to, you know, to set a blur, and it's usually like 14 pixels does it. And then you can clean things up here, which it automatically picks the... Um, um, oh man, I forgot what they call it. Clone stamp. <laughs> and, uh, you know, you clean things up. I'm certainly not going to do that for this whole picture, but, um, the thing that I found that I like the best about this and the thing I probably do more different than anybody, uh, I could be wrong. I didn't see anybody else do it. So when I go to the colors layer, I actually use the, the, uh, mixer brush. Does anybody else do that? Use the mixer brush to uh, um, to even things out. I'm gonna pick. I'm gonna pick a color and. What? You can also use that layer using the mixing brush to kind of do dodge and burn as well. Oh yeah, yeah. The mixer brush is actually good for dodge and burn. When you get really good at it, um, you can do an awful lot with it. Um, but I found if if she had. Um, Oh, let's say this is a full body and she had tan lines from a bikini or something. This is where I can, I can level that out and the bikini lines go away completely. But basically by wiggling up and down just a little bit, notice the lines in her forehead are gone. You always do it in line with, with the coloration that you see. If you go this way, of course, it's going to blend it that way and you don't want that so you always kind of go with the grain i call it so if it's lighter over here and darker over here you go up and down here and then you go here and then you go over here and it kind of stays but i can level off her cheeks a little bit everybody see the difference that it makes there yeah yeah okay there's that i'm going to just flatten this now actually i'll go back to the original and the other way that I do it is with um, Imaginomics Portraiture. Imaginomic Portraiture 3, uh, although their other one works fine too. Um, it's kind of cool, except it's got a bug right now. That's not really her face. It won't turn out like that. I don't, I ignore it anyway, because I know what I'm going to get. Um, and I've always left it the way the factory had it for normal, medium, or strong. I could change a lot of this stuff, and I have but I didn't see any real difference. Um, and a lot of times I just leave it on strong and it does this to the face. Okay, there's the difference. There's before, there's after. Almost everything's cleaned up. I could actually use the, the, um, uh, the healing brush now and hit a couple little spots and she'd have a, a fine face. And you notice it made a second copy. I told it to do that is make two layers and I did that because her red hair in particular um, tends to get softer too and sometimes I like it sometimes I don't um, so I'll I'll uh, uh, turn around and mask it out and sometimes if I mask out and say well it was a little harsh before it's a little too soft now um, I'll mask it but I'll use a gray brush that so it's like uh, opacity you know, if I do it 50% and I can bring back some of the harshness of the hair, but not all of it, or some of the lips, but not all of it. So that's, that's the other way that I do it. And a lot of times I'll do this and then I'll turn around. Let me just flatten this here. 
And I, I used to get all kinds of crap for it. Not that I ever paid any attention anyway. Um, long time ago, I figured out that I didn't care as much as I thought I did. <laughs> um, so you call it thick skin and I call it, well, this is how I like it. Um, I just use a mixer brush and blur the crap out of things. I'll go in a spot and I'll just go back and forth a little. If you do it, you, you pick a color that's close. You don't want it too light or too dark. You get something that's close and you can you can uh, Hollywood the, the crap out of it just by going to certain areas and wiggling. You don't do it in big areas. Um, but you can take out creases in the forehead, which changes really the look uh, of the person, but like her cheek here, do this. Now I got a, 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 uh, a book with 50 photo shoots of Marilyn Monroe. No, I'm sorry, it was a different one. Um, Harry something or other, I forgot his name. He was an old Hollywood uh, photographer. And there was, one, uh, there, there was one set of pages that had a before and after. So this is what the, the uh, actress looked like before, and this was after. And it was a huge difference. And basically, it was just as smooth as can be. It's exactly what you remember seeing, you know, old Hollywood pictures. And it turns out it took them six hours to do that. And they used a pencil. Pencil and pencil lead. And they would like scrape it off. And then they'd use their fingers to, to dodge and burn. It was, it was pretty phenomenal. Um, I'd love that to find on it. Harrell? Yeah, that's him. And uh, uh, it was a beautiful picture. And of course, the original picture, he liked, doing, he liked having a lens and stuff that got every single detail, every freckle, every little hair was there. And then they turned around and took it all out. But, um, but he wanted it all to be there in the first place. So that's, just the, that's really the three things that um, I do for skin. And it just depends on what it is I'm trying to get on you know, which one I use. Um, you know, you do the same for the whole body. Yeah. Yeah. Um, well, we can see that in the next one that I do. So any questions so far? Well, how do you choose one, one way over another? Oh, that just depends on the picture. I look at the picture mm -hmm. and go, you know, it, it's like when you look at a picture and say, should I do this in black and white or color? You know, is, is this, uh, um, sometimes I even call it cartooning it up when I, when I, uh, um, really polish it, uh, a uh, face down. Um, okay, here's, I actually did edit this one. Um, and this is what it ended up looking like, my actual finished copy of it. Um, and yeah, I post it and an awful lot of people go, ah, it's too smooth, it's too smooth. They, they're usually the trolls in the, in the groups that do that. I don't care. It makes them happy to complain and it makes me happy to ignore them. So we're both happy. So, you know, I'm good with that. Um, but yeah, it's just a matter of, of, you know, looking at the picture and deciding, you know, how do I want this? Is somebody going to look at this close? Am I going to crop it later? Um, hey, Dave. Yeah. How do you match the color with the mixer brush? I just tap on it. Um, I'll show you when I get the other picture. Uh, okay. Always, I always write things down. Like uh, I looked up this other one and said, okay, I'll remember that picture. Yeah, right. I'm lying to myself that I'm going to remember a number. It's just not going to happen. Uh, of course, you, when you write it down, you can't remember where you wrote it down, right? So, so now I can't even find it. I know it's here. I just did it this morning. <laughs> Oh, there it is. Okay. So that's the picture we're going to shoot for. Um, and this was the original picture. Okay. So we'll bring this one up. Um, and I play with it. You can see here on, on uh, Lightroom, I've already played with it. I brought the shadows way up. Okay. Notice what it does to her legs and stuff here. I crank the shadows all the way up. Um, I'm not a, a reality photographer at all. I brought the um, exposure up a little bit, okay, and if, it, if things get a little too bright, I'll run the highlights down, 
And a lot of people would look at that and go, oh, that sucks. And you know, for a lot of people it does, it doesn't for me, I like that. Um, but I play with this to get this the way I want it to start with. Um, does that make sense? Anybody have a question there? No, good. <clears throat> I'm good, it's three o'clock here. It's six, it's almost, well, some of you haven't had dinner yet, so you have to stay awake, but at least it's not bedtime. Here. Is that studio in your, your house or somewhere else? That's at my house, yeah. I built a studio on the back of the house, and I was using the master bedroom, and it was only 12 feet wide, and I thought, oh, okay, I'm going to build a studio. So I built a studio, and uh, it's 14 feet wide. It wasn't that big a deal, uh, but it is 24 feet deep, and it's 12 feet high, so that gave me plenty of plenty of room. And of course I can take all this stuff out pretty easy. Um, I think somebody showed that trick the other day. You can select an area as simple as this. And I just, I just do free transform and grab it and pull. And this, you know, okay, wait, 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 wait. This is the trick I was trying to understand. Okay. So you're just, okay, I need this trick. Okay, cool. Um, it's as simple as, well, in this particular, on this side here, I'm going to want to clean this up first because I'm going to drag that over and closer. Not close enough. Okay, so you just you don't want to you know get it on her or anything, and it's going to stretch anything in the picture that you do. But you give yourself some space there if there is space to do this. Um, so you just select it, standard selection tool. Um, do a free transform which brings, you know, there you go. Hold the shift key down, because I'm using the classic. Uh, it depends on how you've got it set, whether you use the shift key or not, but you, you don't want it to be proportional. You want to be able to grab the side and pull. And then there you go. That's it. You guys, you guys know I did a video showing that exact thing, what, two years ago? I mean, well, I did not catch that. And then at your thing in February, you did that. And I was like, whoa, 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 whoa. And you go, oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. It's just blah, blah, blah. And I, I just didn't get it. So thank no, you. There's a video, there was a video that's been in our group for two years now showing how to do that. Okay. Kelly, awesome. Kelly, don't you guys do it a little bit different, though? You don't just do free transform. You do, you know, no. Sh shift control. No, no, no. Control. I do exactly like that. that it really? Okay. That, there was somebody I wasn't else. in the group two years ago. There was somebody else who did this, and they did the same thing, except it actually did it with the content aware would actually fix things. Because this, if I zoom in on this, it stretched it and stuff. Yeah, but then if, I turned. If, if I want something like a like a uh, an old master's backdrop to continue an area where it didn't exist, then content aware is a better choice because you, instead of stretching uh, a you know a granular pattern, uh, you're actually just filling in with a granular pattern, so it's better. But in this case. This is exactly how I do a lot of things to get my subject away from a lot of things. And then even in composites, I'll do that. So no, this is exactly how I do it. Okay, cool. I'm always open to new ways. I'll forget them immediately, but I'm open to new ways. Should I do ranch interview? Wait, 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 let me. Um... Okay, there's something else that I do too that no, I haven't seen other people do. I'll select an entire picture like this one of her. And I'll do another um, free transform and I'll hold the shift key down and I'll uh, make her taller. Because I've never once had a model come in saying, can you make me look shorter? Hasn't happened. Um, they also say, can, you know, they never say, can you make my butt look smaller? None of that stuff ever happens. So anyway, nobody ever notices. As long as her face isn't too stretched out, it works just fine. I'll do that, uh, but uh, selecting the uh, square selection, but I'll do it, say, mid-thigh, and then pull uh -huh. down, and that way the legs stretch, but the upper torso and the face won't. Oh, yeah. Well, um, I've done that before, uh, especially if it makes the face look longer or something. I'll stretch it a different way, but uh, it's amazing what you can get, get away with. Okay, um, well, this is where I would make a copy of this. So I've got two layers, and I'm going to do the, the liquefy. Um, love this part. I do two layers because I'm going to screw her face up, and I need to be able to bring her face back. So I have to have an original copy of it. So 
Um, when I use liquify on the hair, I never put the center in the hair. I always pull, take it out here and pull. And I love doing it with hair because, you know, you can, you can do so much cool stuff and you don't have to be really very specific about it and it works just fine. Um, let's see while we're at it. Why not? Why not? Pull that a little bit. Well, we can pull this out just a little bit out here too. Make it look like it's flowing a little. There we go. All right, there she is. Now, if I look at her face, I probably stretched it out. So I'm going to do a mask here and make her face back to this shape that it was before. There we go. And she turned it on and off and make sure her nose isn't sticking out further than it should or I changed something I shouldn't have. Yeah, it looks all right. Down here looks okay. You see a little bit more flow in the thing. It looks kind of cool. I like it. All right, it's good. I'm gonna flatten that. Dave, can I ask a quick um, uh, hair question? Sure. Um, do you ever have anybody that has long but kind of thin hair and you can kind of see through it? How do you, how do you guys fix that? I, I don't know how to fix that. Hmm. You mean you can see through it like to the back wall or something? Yeah. Here's, here's something that you can do with hair that is, it, 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 it blows me away every time I play with this. We're going to take a piece of her hair here and I'm going to copy it, paste it, and put it in a free transform. And I'm going to put it up here. Okay, this little bar is in the way. I'll just move this. There we go. And now I can uh, mask that in pretty easy to make it look like it belongs there. Hair is super forgiving. Now the background, I, I would probably take this layer and darken it just a little bit so the background matched so I didn't have to deal with it. But you can go in here and do some interesting things and it all looks like it belongs there. So if somebody had extra thin hair, for instance, just make a copy of it and put it back in there and line it up with the hair that's there, you know, that's, that's got gaps and you can fill in the gaps. It's, it's probably how I would do it. Does that make sense? It does so much. I'm gonna try it. <laughs> okay. Um, okay, so her hair looks okay. The rest of it looks okay. So I'm going to flatten this. Yeah, we don't need the other piece. Okay, so we're good. All right, now, um, I'm gonna, can you guys hear that? Somebody yelling? So we have neighbors who have a cabin next door and they only come up about once every four months and they decided to do that just a little bit ago. They're out over there partying. I'm okay with that. All right, yeah, taking out some some things. Now here's where, um, this, is, this is where I really wished I'd learned about the mixer brush early on. And when I finally discovered it, I really was hoping that they had just introduced it. But no, it had been there all along. Okay, I'm, I've got the mixer brush uh, selected. Oh, well, I selected it and I said, I wanna pick a color. So I'm just gonna pick, pick this background right here and say, okay. And I'm going to take all that crap off the wall and off the floor just by clicking and wiggling in those areas. Do you have Nick? I do. Um, this is where that Vivenza works really great. Just as a tip, you can take out all of that crap with uh, the dials there. Really? Play with it, yeah, play with it sometime. I do that on white floors all the time. Awesome. I've also, I always wondered what that one did. 
I just use silver effects mostly. Which one is that, Christy? The Vivenza. Okay. And then you can get rid of all your details in an area. You can change your color. You can make your, you can duplicate your areas so that they all look alike. It's really pretty cool. It's great on, on straight background. So the way I do it with this brush, you always have to make sure you go in, in line with things. If I went like this, it would look bad, okay? So you gotta go, like I said before, in, with, with the grain. Now, in this particular case, I let it go over the sides a little bit because I, it's okay that the shadow is a little blurry on the sides. Dave, when you use the mixer brush, <clears throat> are you changing any of the flow or the wet settings? No, I think I've still got them set the way they, they the default. The flow is at 34%. Um, you can see it here. It's 50% wet. Um, yeah, they're pretty, yeah, it's, uh, I've never changed these from the way that they came from the factory. So I'm thinking that's probably how it should be. Of course, you know how, uh, uh, how Photoshop is, it, it, whatever you change seems to be the way it sa saves it until you change it again. So if I change it at some point, that's what it's been all along. So anyway, I just buffer around to clean things. I used to paint the, the studio floor and found out that you paint it once, you do one shoot and it's dirty again. So I don't do that anymore. Um, okay, so she's good. Now, see with this one, if I wanted to, uh, since this isn't gonna be you know, super detailed and I want, it's, it's gonna be cartooned up, um, my term, uh, first of all, I'm going to save this because when you don't want it to crash, it will. And Imaginomic, it hasn't done it on me for months, but I'm going to say before. There we go. Hey, Dave, I don't know if you can see the chat, but you got a few questions in there. Oh, uh, no, I don't see the tab. Okay, so what's the questions? Um, Where's the tab? Let me just read them. Yeah. Okay. Um, let's see. Start with Michael Picolari. Model question. Model in the studio, did you already know what you were planning to do with the background and composite? No, not at all. As a matter of fact, this shoot was done in, 20, in April of 2018. So um, like everyone else, I'm sitting at home and I'm finding things and going, oh, I'll try something with that. And uh, everything that I did uh, this morning to prepare for this uh, was like, well, let's put in a background and let's do this and let's do this because that's what they want to see. So I was making it up. But if you're going to put backgrounds in and you're going to composite them, it's kind of important to know what it is that you're going to put in the background when you shoot it. Because if you put the light over here and then the background you want to put in has light over here, one of those two is going to have to flip to make it look right. So when I first started, I would pull up the backgrounds. If I was going to composite, I'd pull up the background and then I'd look at it and go, okay, I need it lit, lit this way on the model in order to fit that picture. Okay. And, then, and that was really important. Um, now I don't play as much. If any of you follow uh, Joel Grimes, he's really good. He does a lot of sports stuff. Everything he does is shot from both sides. The, the lights from both sides all the time. And when he does a background, he shoots his own backgrounds like stadiums or whatever. And he makes sure the lights come from both sides. So he never has to deal with light coming from here, or light coming from there. It's always the same. Um, and that's a cool way to do it. But um, uh, but yeah, I, I hope that answers the question. No, we didn't have it. And and just as a, um, since I do this for fun and I don't, I don't make any money at it uh, except teaching it and stuff, but uh, I don't make any money at it. It's for my own fun of make, creating the art. When a model comes, when I have a shoot coming up, I have like 5,000 uh, reference pictures that I've collected over the, from, over the net for years. And I'll run through those pictures and I'll pull out certain ones that fit the way the model looks, the kinds of outfits we may or may not have. Uh, in some cases, I really love the lighting in this one. 
It doesn't have anything to do with us actually doing that. I want to do that lighting. So a lot of times the picture's like, yeah, we're not doing that, but I, that's for me to get the light the way I want it. So, so I'll pull like 20 pictures and I'll have them on, up on the screen. And when the model comes, we'll say, okay, well, let's do some things like this. Uh, let's try that one first. Or do you have a favorite? So we'll point at one, we'll go into the studio, we'll do it. And when we're done, it doesn't look anything like that at all. Not even close. But it got us in there thinking we knew what we were doing and we ended up creating something really cool. So, <laughs> so that's how I do it. Um, it's very seldom do people show up and we know precisely what we want to do. I envy the people who do that, but I don't. Um, so, okay. I think we're good here. Do you want to do some more questions? There's yeah, like well, three more. Yeah, what's another one? Um, do you ever use the freeze mask in Liquify? Uh, no. Okay. <laughs> it's a cool, cool feature. But I liked your, I liked the way you did it. That was good. Oh, um, you can use puppet warp to fix or to fit a paste of hair into place with thin hair. Hmm. I think you meant fit or paste yeah. the hair. And then the last one is um, for the mixer brush, you typically keep the same settings up top. Yes. Okay. And so never change those. But the key to that is when you're using that is um, uh, sample the coloration. Uh, if it's lighter or darker or whatever, sample that. Because if I sample here in, um, like if I'm doing the mixer brush, if I, if I sample the lighter area and then I try and wiggle here, you notice it lightens that up, which you don't want. So um, I always just sample, sample the general area and then that's where I'll work. And the, the closer I get to this, I'll then turn around and sample the darker and then work up here. So that's kind of important. Now somebody, I think in one of them, hmm, they used the mixer brush, but they made it this so there was no color to it at all. And that was interesting. It didn't work for me like I thought it would. Um, so I still do it the way I've done it on, you know, 6,000 other pictures. Um, <clears throat> was there another question? Or was that all of them so far? That was it. Okay, cool. All right, uh, dodge and burn. Um, I know everybody does dodge and burn. Dodge and burn is so cool. Um, I don't know, I, I told this story once before. I've got a friend who, he, he would shoot and he was black and he tended to shoot a lot of black girls and that was cool and the skin is so amazing in those, but everything was so dark, I couldn't see the pictures. And one day he came over because he'd forgotten his glasses in my studio and I says, have you ever done dodge and burn? He says, I've heard of it. I said, sit down. And I showed him dodge and burn. And from that point on, I could see all of his pictures. He, he was like, oh my God, I did not know it did that. Um, and his, it changed his entire style in 10 minutes. It's good. I haven't cleaned up her face yet. Um, but yeah, with dodge and burn, uh, I do it with uh, an action with two layers, 50% gray on overlay. So it's like putting two pieces of plastic on it. The cool part there is, oh, and I have it set at about 10% exposure. That changes. I do change that from time to time. Um, Doing it on layers like that, it doesn't seem to hit the hit the uh, um, hit the picture as hard, and I can change it if I overcook it. I can turn it down on that layer just by changing the opacity on it. So I can every once in a while I look at it and go, you know, I went a little overboard. The older I get, the less I go. I consider it overboard. <laughs> Doesn't mean it's not overboard. I just don't consider it overboard. Always do the clothes. Clothes are the most important part to me because that really shows the, shows the, um, on the legs. You can shape the legs completely, which is so awesome. I love it when people say, so how do you know where to dodge and burn? I said, well, I've been studying women women's shape since I was 14. So I pretty much know <laughs> how the muscle structure goes. So we can do that. I like to think that all that, all that work studying the female form 
you know, came in handy, right? Um, I don't have a good example here, but I usually use burn. If she had her arms crossed, for instance, I would burn be any place that the arms touched um, together, I would burn right in, oh, it's hard to see now. Yeah, right in here, I would burn because it separates them, and gives them more space. It looks weird when you do it, but it doesn't look weird when you look at it. It says, yeah, yeah, that's the way it's supposed to be. So I'm gonna flatten this, actually. Um, let me run it again. I'm back in, in Dodge. And I can bring out just a little bit more of her face that I would want. I always dodge up and down on an eyelid if there is one, because that makes her eye rounder, which is good. And if this was lit up more, I would put um, dark all around her face to separate the hair from the face, and it looks a lot, a lot nicer. She's got dark hair here, and it's already dark around her face, so it doesn't show up like that. But uh, uh, here's where I could use the mixer brush if I wanted to be really lazy. Now let me let me uh, flatten things here first. Remember, ask questions, interrupt me if if there's anything. It's like, wait, you do what? Okay, I picked uh, picked her skin here, and I'm just gonna do a little bit of mixer brush on her here. And you can actually change, um, see how she's got a, a little bit of a frown here. Um, I'm gonna change the coloration just a little. If I go back and forth here, I can make the frown go away. And then the look on her face is different than it was before. Now this looks, looks very clown-like because we're really close to her face here. This is, <laughs> this is nobody should be looking at it this close if you consider the size of the whole picture. You remember, we're looking at it from way out here. So it's really not that important. Okay, I could also run that other filter again, the Imaginomic, a second time. All right, now let's, uh, let's bring in a background and add it. It's always the fun part for me. Okay, we're gonna bring this one in. I like this one because it had some lines on the bottom so I can show you guys um, some features here. Okay, I'm gonna make this bigger so it fits. I really don't care about the whole thing. I look at her and go, okay, muscle lights in front of her. So I'm gonna put this right here and say, okay. Almost any background you find like this, it's really cool. They always tend to make it that so if you're standing up, that's the angle of the floor and that always kind of fits the angle that the person's standing. Um, it works out. Okay, I'm gonna do a, a um, layer mask and we're going to use a regular brush and we're gonna use um, very light gray. And I did that all wrong. I'm gonna unlock her, put her on the top, and put the layer mask on her. Okay, there we go. So underneath her is the background. Okay, now I've selected the um, layer mask there, and the brush is set. We're good. Okay, I'm just gonna paint around her. Stop by her shoes and all around in here. Yep, it's getting on her, it's supposed to. Okay, I'm gonna go a little bit darker and not quite touch her, but get closer. And then I'm gonna go a lot darker and stay way out on the outside edges. For me, this always makes sure that she's the center of attention which is, uh, to me, it's, that's all that's important. Okay, I'm gonna go to white so I can mask things back the way they were. And I'm going to, um, now you notice I, there's stars around her head here. I didn't have to worry about all the little hairs. 
none of that stuff works fine. And yes, a lot of that got on her. That's why she turned darker. And I don't have to actually come down here and do her hand, it's fine. Places that you can see the building through her body, bad idea, that you need to take out, you know. That's good, but her dress is see-through, right? Yeah, you know, not completely, but this part here, you can see through it. I'm not gonna mask that out. I'm gonna let you see through it. Because you would normally be able to see whatever's back there. All you gotta do is make sure, especially if it's got lines, you gotta make sure you do this. Now, even down here, if you wanted this to look see-through, you can do where her leg would be and let a little of it stay in there. And if you don't want that much, because it's not 100% see-through, you just paint it with a gray, a lighter gray, maybe a darker gray. No, it would be a lighter gray. <clears throat> I didn't have a nap today. There we go. So now it looks more like um, you can see through it. but not 100% through it. All right, and definitely down, down where her shoes and stuff are. Now, why is it not working? Paint, there, white, good. Does all that make sense? Kind of cool. Um, another big advantage, you know, I'm, if you've watched these before from me, another big advantage is of uh, dusting in or painting in your own. Notice the shadow is still there. I didn't have to add a shadow. It was already there um, because I didn't bring in the background 100%. That's, that's just still there, which is cool. So there you go. Now I can use dodge and burn and I can play some games with the background or I could have waited until I had the background to dodge and burn her and the background if I wanted to. So, so any questions so far? Y'all still awake? Shannon, Shannon wants to know where you're getting your backgrounds from, Dave. Oh, I go and shoot these all myself. <laughs> no, I'm kidding. Um, all right, man. I wish I could. Uh, especially the ones on other planets. Those are really nice. Um, my backgrounds come from a lot of different places. Uh, most of them are free, and they're free until Adobe buys them, and then they're not free anymore, and then somebody else pops up, and they're free uh, until Adobe buys them, and that's kind of how it works. Um, uh, my favorite place right now is Pixabay. Um, P-I-X... I think it's A-B-A-Y or Pix eBay. Anyway, Pixabay, look it up and you'll find, uh, you'll find there's tons and tons of stuff on there. My wife took a picture of uh, rain on our sunroof one day and she just pointed the camera straight up, took the picture. I put it on there to share it and 3,000 people have downloaded it. I mean, it's a really good picture of water droplets on glass, but, um, uh, so it's, uh, it's a share thing. An awful lot of the work on there was uh, contributed in exchange for uh, downloading things, which um, let's see if I can find it here. All oh, right there, picks a bay. Is my password dot 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 <laughs> yeah, this is this is the one that uh, uh, my wife took a picture of and a um, whole bunch of people downloaded but you can type in anything that you want um, and there's like there you go you download in their full size you know 5,000 pixels across um, and there's usually this this row right here is from Shutterstock so Shutterstock will probably end up buying this and end up owning all the pictures at some point. I think this is how they, they get pictures anymore, um, but they try and trick you. 
uh, by picking those is, oh, for $6, you can have this. But for any of these others, I can pick it and go, okay, free download, cool. What size would you like? This is 3,200 across, which is plenty for an ocean. Um, and then, it, then it, uh, it'll show, um, usually at the bottom, oh. Usually at the bottom or somewhere in there, it'll show like pictures or other pictures the same guy had done. But that's where I get mine uh, today. I used to get it from uh, another site, which got bought out. So hope that answers your question. There's a, there's a few of them like that. Somebody else uh, did a presentation a few days ago that um, they had the name of someone else too. But uh, yeah, I'm sure this one probably came from there. So what happens when Adobe or Shutterstock or whatever buys it and your picture is on, you know, social media or something? Yeah. Uh, they, they, I'm such a small guy. If, if that was going to get on, go on a cover of time magazine, then we're going to have to talk about that. But, <laughs> gotcha. you know, it, one gazillionth of 1% of the people on Facebook see my stuff. You know, that's like 80, right? Um, gotcha. So, eh. I don't worry about it too much. And the fact is, um, they didn't sign with anybody either. They got it for free. So, um, and how do they know I'm not a member of, uh, you know, uh, Adobe or anybody else for that matter? So yeah, it gets a little tricky. Um, so yeah, I'm not worried about it only because of that. Uh, somebody asked me the other day, I did some pictures and it had a book in it and it was a book on Marilyn Monroe. And of course the cover was in the picture. And he says, did you get permission to do that? I said, well, if they asked me to take it down, I would. If I was big enough that it made a difference, I'd love that. But eh, don't worry about it. Um, uh, I, wouldn't, I, wouldn't, I wouldn't use one of your pictures, any of your pictures, for instance, as a background. It would have to come from a background place. But um, although I've seen some pictures, it's like, oh, my God, that would make a great background. Um, but, uh, but yeah, yeah. So, I, you know, you got to. You got to think them through, but any other questions about anything? It doesn't have to be this in particular. Dave, I know that you use the, the portraiture three. Do you happen to know of a code, a discount code for that? Or do you have one? No, the best thing to do is wait for Christmas time. <laughs> it's, they'll have it for like 150 bucks for most of December. Um, that's the only time I've seen any, any time that they've had it on, on sale or anything. It might be on sale right now because we're in a unique, you're a unique time. It is. Is it on sale? It is. Yeah. I'm looking at it. Well, the suites, um, 180 off. It's only $400. Oh, that's, that's, <laughs> they, they have a lot. They have one for video too. That does the same thing to a video. Which blows actually, they're, they're the the Photoshop and Lightroom one is normally four hundred. It's three hundred right now. So um, for what it's worth. Yeah. Okay. Well, that's. I don't know why anybody would need it for Lightroom. I bought it for both, so I paid the four hundred dollars. Although I think at the time I could got it for three hundred dollars if I bought both. The 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 deal is if I was doing weddings or whatever and I needed to to soften, you know, um, fifty pictures. If you have it in Lightroom, you can select those 50 pictures and say, soften all these. It does one and says, what do you want to do? And you make your adjustments. Say, okay, go for it. And then while you're off getting a cup of coffee, it's editing all the rest of them for you and making a second copy so you can edit from the second copy. But um, that's pretty cool. And I bought it thinking I was going to do weddings until I did a few. And then it's like, ah, I'm never going to do this again. Um, no offense to the people who love doing weddings. Everybody who loves doing weddings, raise your hand. <laughs> Nobody's ever. Has anyone? I like has cake. <laughs> has anyone tried the skin uh, features in the new Luminar? I have it, but I haven't tried it. It's a habit thing. It takes 21 days to learn a new habit. I'd have to, I'd have to probably uninstall this one to keep me from using it. But uh, I've used it. I've used it. I actually like doing it in Photoshop better. I think Luminar makes. Well, it, I guess I don't know. I just I thought Photoshop was um, you had more control. 
Luminar didn't quite, um, you know, they, it's nice because they had like you could get dark circles out from underneath eyes and you can lip saturation is really easy or making look more red. Um, but I just felt like the smoothing of the skin, you had more control in Photoshop. It looked more real. You kept the pores, the texture um, than in Luminar. Thanks. Sure. Now there's a trick you can do though. If it, if it over overdoes it, like sometimes this one does, it, it, it gets pretty smooth. Um, uh, it has two layers when I tell it to do it. So there's the top layer that's smooth and the bottom layer is the original. You just change the opacity a little bit on the top one until you get the, the um, texture that you want. And so you can adjust it. I would suspect Luminar, you could do the same thing. If you do it to an upper layer, then you could actually bring some of it back again. Um, uh, but, uh, but yeah, but, but I've found this has saved so much time for me because it actually does a pretty good job. Mm -hmm. uh, a lot of times I'll do it on a face and if I adjust it to medium or light, it'll clean it up really well and leave uh, texture behind. So I kind of like that. So we went from that to that. No biggie. But um, what you can also do, Dave, is on the, uh, when you run the frequency separation mm -hmm. and you take the, uh, the color layer, then run a imaginomics on that color layer. So it's all it's doing is really smoothing out the uh, the color, and then you still have the uh, the texture layer. That is an awesome idea. I hadn't even considered that. Yeah. Oh man, that's cool. So do you do that? Yeah, I do. Every once in a while, I'll try it, and then I'll. What I usually do is I'll duplicate the color layer. And so I do it on a separate color layer. And that way I can adjust that color layer um, how I want it, uh, you know, to what degree. That is awesome. Okay, well, that. Yeah, Dave, I do that also on every single photo and it works awesome. Really? Oh, man, okay. So if you guys see a change in my, uh, in my style, I'm, that's why. <laughs> I'll start doing that. Why don't you try, try it now, Dave? Come on. <laughs> sure, why not? Um, there we go. Okay, so frequency separation. Well, maybe I should flatten everything first. Okay. Um, Frequency separation, got it. Okay, so on the color layer, there we go, of course it's blurry. I mean, can't see it. Do you guys have the same problem? Where yeah. the, re the preview looks like this? Yeah, so, it's one of those things that if you keep everything up to date, somebody doesn't keep up with somebody. This all happened when one of the Adobe updates happened. And, uh, hey, Dave, it looks like you need the latest update. It's 3.2 AI. Oh, okay. 3.2. Yeah, I probably don't have it. Oh, so now I've got, oh, I told it to do copies, so there's two of them. So let me turn off this one because I don't want, don't need that. I see a little difference there. Well, you can use... You can use two of them and just, uh, if it's too much, it's just reduce the opacity. Right, yeah. That's cool. Okay, I learned what I need. Anybody else need anything? <laughs> <clears throat> and there was, uh, uh, I got like five minutes for the hour. There was, um, I forgot who was talking about Lightroom the other day and working with, uh, um, uh, working with catalogs and things. Anybody want to know how I do it? Because sure. I have a lot of shoots that I've done. Yes, not, please. Not since January, but 
yeah, I think I've got a total of about 1,500 shoots um, in the last 10 years. And this is, this is the last, uh, I don't know, five or six years worth right here. Now, here's the deal. Every single one of these is a catalog. Okay, so every time I do a shoot, I say, when, I, when I'm done, I take the card out, I go into Lightroom, say create a catalog and call it this. And I use the name of the model, the month, the year, and if there's a makeup artist or there's a location or something else I wanna remember, I put it after that. So, so that's my little syntax for remembering. Here I had Aurora and Taylor in September of 2016 in California. Okay, I can find that. If I wanna bring up something from that, I actually say open the catalog and um, go to it. And well, I'll just pick this one here, Ashleya at Bonita. Double click on it. Um, by the way, I never tell it to do a backup of the catalog. It just makes a whole bunch of copies of it and it doesn't seem to make it. I've never lost the catalog. I don't know. I had one where I didn't do a backup and I lost all of my work. Oh, well, see, that's the, that's the thing. I would only lose the work that I did on that particular shoot. Correct. Okay. Yeah. Because I do the same way you do it. Do you? Okay. Yeah. Hey, the, the, main, the main reason I do that with, with a separate catalog um, coming from an IT world, I said, look, I'm not going to wait a year to find out I'm doing this wrong. So I learned <laughs> all, about, all about catalogs, figured out what it is that I wanted to do with them. And um, uh, says, okay, this is how I'm going to do it. So when it creates a catalog, it creates a folder. And when I import, I import all the images into that folder automatic. Well, it's not automatic, but I imported them into that folder. Then when I'm editing, <clears throat> if I edit one of these and save it as a TIFF, it saves it right next to the other one and uh, it saves it in that folder. Now, if I take that folder and I put it on a backup somewhere or I hand it to one of you or whatever, you can bring up that uh, catalog and everything about that shoot is in that catalog and it's done. I never have the little thing up here that says, oh, that image is missing. Now, if I kept everything in one catalog and then moved some pictures off, then I'm gonna, well, where are all those pictures? It thinks they're there, but they're not. I moved them over there. And no, I wanted them all in one folder. I also, and this is a few years ago, I finally figured out how to do this. When I have a picture and I decide I wanna export it um, from Lightroom, which is what I do, um, when I want to post it somewhere. I have um, custom settings for the file name. And the custom setting, you can have keywords. So I have the keywords and the file name. So when it saves this image, it's going to save it, in this case, Ashleya 0616 Bonita dash, then the actual uh, image number, and then it'll add a bunch of edits, depends on how much I work with it, and then JPEG. Here's the cool part. That's exactly what I called the, um, um, uh, the catalog, because once I've imported them, I select all of them, and I put a keyword in, which is the same name as the catalog. So now, when I run across the picture, and go, oh, I want to do some more editing from that shoot. Or if somebody sent, shows me a picture and says, you know, I want a print of this one or whatever, everything I need to know is right here. I can go straight to that catalog, pull it up, ta-da, there it is. So it's not, I'm not scratching my head. Now, <laughs> you, you think, well, yeah, that's pretty cool. Well, it's very cool for me because remember, I'm a fine art nude photographer and sometimes there's just a butt. <laughs> and it's like, well, whose butt is that? And if I post it, the first girl who likes it, it's probably her butt. But I don't know that. So now I can look and I know exactly whose it is and you know, the whole works. So it's really helped me a lot. And uh, um, when you get to my age, there's some things that you'd like to do. Like here, I got to do that or I won't remember anything about the picture. I only put my name on pictures because 
I want to know if it's mine or not. Cause I look at pictures online. I've seen pictures before and went, oh, that's pretty cool. And then I looked, Oh, I wonder how long ago I took that because I don't remember taking it or editing it or anything. So anyway, this is how I do mine. And this is, uh, um, it's been, uh, I've never regretted it. Now, if you don't do your stuff in separate catalogs, it's a piece of cake to create them. If you already keep them in different folders, you can go to a folder, create a catalog, tell it it's inside that folder, and then tell it to add all of those pictures. And instantly, you now have a catalog in the folder with all of those pictures in it. And you're set. And you do that with each of the folders. And now you've got exactly what I have set up. So, so anyway, I know nobody's going to run off and do this stuff different, but I want to show you how I do it. So Kalina and I, I don't know, five years ago, we used to have I don't know, one catalog with like 30,000 images in it. And we watched this creative live show, bought the show and watched it. And we were awakened to the religion of every single shoot has a different catalog. <laughs> and since that day, uh, we have, we've, I don't care if it's even if I'm just doing a headshot for Kalina and there's only 30 images, it has its own catalog with, with keywords assigned to it for searching later and everything. That's, yeah, for five years, we, we learned that lesson. <clears throat> this, by the way, is just up the creek. We, we walk past this every other day or so, um, right here in the forest. And, um, yes. I have been known to uh, composite outside. I think this is one of the first outdoor pictures that I composite. I said, there's a whole bunch of old logs and crap back there. So much nicer. <laughs> I think that I even added, added the fern. Yeah, the little fern in the corner here. So that was kind of cool. But yeah, it's rough. Uh, it's rough living here. <laughs> this... Uh, it wasn't this exact shoot, but you can tell by the angle here, this is a about the only real waterfall we've got. And I'm standing in the water. I figure if, if I'm standing in the water, um, if I can't feel my toes anymore, she can't feel hers, so it's probably time to get out. So I'm standing there and I'm shooting and you know doing my thing. I'm an old guy, I can't hear that well anyway. And the waterfall's doing this rushing sound, right? And I'm shooting and I get a little uneven because I'm standing on these rocks, you know, and I go to put my hand on the, on the side because it's, it's going up on both sides kind of. And I went to put my hand down and I'm glad I looked because there was a rattlesnake coiled up right there, right where I was going to put my hand. And I'm pretty sure he or she would not have been happy about that. So, so I went, Oh, well, I know this water's cold enough. It doesn't want to get in the water. So I'm okay. And I can get out the other side. So I finished taking some pictures and got out. Um, and that was my narrow escape because I think it's $25,000 for the anti-venom and you need two. <laughs> so that would have been an expensive, uh, expensive way to, to uh, keep my arm. But uh, anyway, that's my story and I'm sticking to it. I have a model question. Sure. Do you just, um, over the years, have you just, luckily recruited some really great models or do you use online places like model mayhem or i started with model mayhem because that's where just about everybody starts because i was terrible and um most of the models on model mayhem are just getting started and they're not very good so it's a perfect place to learn lighting and all the things and make all your mistakes and i knew i was doing that at the time i might have liked the pictures i can't even look at them now because they were so yeah. bad so it's, it's one of these things where you get a little bit better, the models get a little bit better, you know, because now they're willing to work with you and then you get a little bit better and they get a little bit better. Now the smart models out there and smart photographers for that matter, if they're in it and they want to make money at it, uh, first you get good at your lighting and editing and stuff, which still takes a year or two. Um, but then you hire the best models you can find really totally knock out best for whatever it is you're doing, fashion or whatever, and you shoot them and then they are in your portfolio and that will get you the business you want. Models will do the same thing. They get fairly decent with modeling 
and then they'll hire a good photographer so the pictures in their portfolio look awesome and that will get them the kind of work that they want. Um, uh, doing everything trade isn't going to get you where, what you want. Now, we're in Arizona. There is no market here. Anybody who says they're a model, it's just because they stood in front of the camera for a bit. Um, because uh, all the modeling agencies are fake. They're, they're there to sell acting classes and all that other stuff. Um, <clears throat> and most of them know that. And if they don't, I tell them. But uh, yeah, now what I have now is I, if you look at my work close enough, there's probably a dozen people I work with over and over again because um, uh, we hit the ground running. And I says, well, let's do this. Okay. And they go do it. I know what their limits are and we're all happy. And, you know, there's no warm up period to speak of. Um, some move away, like this one's living in California now. Um, other ones get pregnant and do their thing. And, and um, you know, life changes for them doesn't for me. I'm still an old guy with a camera. Um, uh, but, uh, uh, but yeah, I have I, people contact me and want to work with me. Some of them ask me my rates. That's when you know that you're doing okay is when they start asking you what your rates are. Um, I usually don't charge anybody um, because if I charge them, then they can tell me what they want. <laughs> I want to take the pictures I want to take. So he says, you want pictures like what I take? Good. Let's shoot. And we'll do that. Um, so it's pretty rare. Um, but like I said, I'm not in it to make any money out of it. I never thought I would. Um, now I now I teach, and I love that. And there's some money in it, so it's good. Um, but yeah, and then coming up with ideas is is fun, um, and it keeps me going. And being around young people makes you younger. You know, which is nice. And all everybody I'm around is younger now. I don't understand that. You know, when they say, always respect your elders. I don't have anybody to respect anymore. Oh, <laughs> uh, my wife. Hey, yeah. She's a little hey, older than me. Hey, Dave. Yeah. Do you have time for one more question? Or we can do this another time. Oh, I've got, uh, I, I can talk until midnight. Well, how do you get that silk, silky look with the model of glasses? And model with glasses? The model of the glasses you brought up. The skin was really silky. Oh, that, that one with the uh, goggles on? Yeah. Or the, I think it was. I can bring that one back. Yeah. Oops. Um, uh, I'm pretty sure that I just used the mixer brush on her skin. I think yeah, that, it looked really silky. That was back in the era that I did that with all of them. That one? Yeah. yeah, I guess you did the mixer brush with the opacities and settings. and Yeah, just the mixer brush all around here and then a little dodge and burn to make certain areas stand out. And that was, and that's really about it. Because, yeah, if we look okay. really close, um, well, if we look close enough, we're going to see all kinds of crap. But you can see that I used the mixer brush around on, on her here. And, yeah, I, I call it cartooning it up because you know nobody looks like that and that's okay when somebody says but that doesn't look realistic i said well i didn't take it with my cell phone i take things that i want realistic with my cell phone and then i have hdr turned on so it doesn't turn out realistic anyway so that's my dining room window um Ke kelly likes that one because it's natural light <laughs> I noticed, Kelly, I teased you I about that. I like all your stuff, dude. I, I teased you about that the other day, and then you, you showed all those lights that you owned. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> See, I have lights. Yeah, I know you do. But anyway. But yeah, the silky, the silky look, um, I like it. Like I said, if you do it, um, the models like it. They don't complain. But... Um, you know, you'll have people go, ah, oh, the skin's too smooth. That's unrealistic. Says, Thank you. Have a nice day. Don't care. Here's a, here's a reflection. I, I told people about reflections the other day when I did it. I had to do two reflections on this one. I did the one on the leg, but because her hand was out here, I had to then turn around and do one on her hand because they didn't line up. It's still kind of done dorky, but it gets the point across. 
I love the fact that I can pull the wool over people's eyes by doing things that, that, uh, um, aren't right, but it still works. And unless you explain it to them, they don't know any different. Like I said earlier, you know, if you get really close and you do this, you go, this looks terrible, but you back up and it's, Oh no, it looks fine. So, so any other questions? It's actually my shower. I can say I've been in the shower with a model. <laughs> I was fully clothed and I had a camera at the time, but hey, this picture right here, I turned around and did this with it. It's just kind of fun. You all should try that. Do a, do a candle thing and, and put some smoke in and, and mix, uh, mix an image in with it. Actually, it looks like I did a couple of them. Yeah. So anyway, that's what I do to edit. It really doesn't take me that much more time to explain it while I'm doing it. Did I skip over too much or did everybody catch everything? That's pretty slick. Okay. I, I never do it. Like you're all newbies. Thank you. You're not newbies. I'll let you know after I try it. <laughs> well, thank you for that. Uh, uh, you guys for that um, uh, tip on... Um, using Imaginomic on the color layer. Never thought of that. Awesome. It can be so cool. Thanks, Dave. Thank you, guys. Thanks, Dave. Thank you. That was great. Thanks. Thank we'll you. See y'all. See y'all later. You. Have a good night. You Thank too. You. Thanks, Thank Dave. You. Appreciate it. Dave, I'm going to text you in a few minutes. I'll direct message you in a few minutes. Okay. Thanks, buddy.